there are people that are actually out there that are afraid to invest because they're hung up on this idea that in the future, everybody's crypto is gonna get hacked and stolen. Okay, first of all, cryptocurrencies are already resistant to quantum computers somewhat, depending on how you use them, but it's still not 100%. For true post-quantum crypto, we need to use a quantum resistant signature scheme, like Lamport signatures. A good hashing function is considered to be quantum resistant. There is a quantum algorithm called Grover's algorithm that makes reversing the hash more efficient, but it's not a very big difference. To make one of these signatures, all you need is a hash function. How does that work? So for this example, we're gonna use SHA-256, and the way I'm gonna describe it, you can only sign a message once, but just know that by using hash trees, you can use the same private key multiple times. Here's how it works. To generate the private key, you're gonna randomly generate 256 pairs of random numbers, each 256 bits long. So your private key is just 512 random numbers. For the public key, you're gonna hash out each one of these numbers and your public key will just look like a list of 512 hashes. Give this to people, spread it around, have people send you money here. Now to sign a message, first thing you're gonna do is hash the message. That's usually what you do when you're signing messages anyway. And we're gonna take a look at this number in binary form. Looking at the first digit, if it's a zero, you're gonna reveal the first number of the first pair of your private key. If the bit is a one, you're gonna take the second number of the first pair of your private key. You do this for all 256 bits, and there's your signature right there. So to verify this signature, someone would take the message, take the hash of it, and then they're also going to hash all 256 numbers that make up your signature. If the message hash starts with a zero, they're gonna check the first number of the first pair in the public key and make sure that matches with what they have. Let's say the second bit in the message hash starts with a one. They're gonna take their second hash and see if it's the same as the second number of the second pair in your public key. They do this for all the bits and that's how they verify your signature. I've got a quick little implementation of this Lamport signature thing right here, link in the description. As long as the hash is quantum secure, then this kind of signature will be resistant to quantum computers. The question of the week is, if you chose an answer to this question at random, what is the chance you will be correct? A, B, C, or D? Leave your answers in the comments below. Here's the answers to last week's question.